Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lance McCann Show. My guest today is Jennifer Pappas. Her and her husband own Papa Pavlos. So uh, today we're going to dive into how they're coping through COVID-19 and, and a little history about the business. So thank you for stopping by. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Um, I'm really curious about the history of Papa Pablo. So we'll get into that in, in a little bit. So how are you doing through this pandemic? Like, what? How Let's do... see, are you asking mentally <laughs> or business-wise, uh, emotionally? How about a little bit of both? Because, <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot of other businesses are struggling. So maybe... Mm -hmm. Um, something you say might be able to help them get through the, uh, the emotional part and the business part as well. Yeah, I don't know how to um, describe how how I, we're handling it. I know that it's better now than it was in March. I mean, in March when it first everything started and you first were forced to shut down. Like I had a physical stomach ache every day and where, you know, I stopped eating and just ate once a day because I was also so desperate to keep our business going that I never stopped trying to promote it and pack orders and whatnot. So I didn't make any time. But then at the same time, too, I just like physically had a stomach ache. So that has gone away in the last, well, you know, few months. And so now I've probably gained some weight back or whatever. So that's, <laughs> that's the bad side of it. But that, anyways. That's the side effect. When people were more stressed, we yeah. stop taking care of ourselves, stop eating. And then it just kind of landslides from there where, you know, it just kind of. Yeah, because everybody deals with things and stress so differently. And I'm an emotional person anyways. And so. I worry a lot and I cry and and I get stressed. But then because of you, then I started <laughs> doing these videos. And so let the world know like how hard it is and what the struggle is. And it's been nice that people have responded to it. And it's helped get our business out there a little bit more, more than it was before. And our business has been around for like 30 years. Oh, wow. It, it's not that... a brand new business. But... The problem is when you're in a business and especially when you're in the service industry where you're always wanting to please people and have people return and be happy and keep coming back. And you're also working with people that are so, um, I don't know, judgmental or finicky or if something you're goes talking wrong. talking about the clients or are you talking about the, the, your employees? No, the clients, more the clients. So you want to make sure that your business stays afloat. Everybody has a great experience when they come for dinner. So that they'll keep yeah. coming back. And so um, it's just it's just hard to, even if you've been in business for 30 years, and a lot of people say, like, we're a staple of the community. And uh, you agree. And I try to stay really involved with the community. And I try to think of... When we think of specials, we don't think of it as, you know, like we think of it as a way to give back to the community to try to give people what they're asking for, like more deals so that they'll come in and be able to get good food that's healthy and fresh, but also not super expensive. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, um, it's a kind of it's a tough line to be able to be profitable and serve a good meal, I would imagine. Like, yeah, it is. Because you're subject to price changes. All the time. But it's hard for you to raise your prices when yeah. everything goes up. Right. And we have, uh, especially my husband, I do too, but my husband is way, like, very serious about quality of ingredients and food. And so... Um, I know that. He is. You can and taste it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's really important. But what I was saying with being in business for 30 years, I still wish that I felt like we're okay. Like we're going to make it through COVID and I'm not going to have to worry that our that our business is not. I mean, I don't really like to think of that our business would close, but I just wish I didn't feel like I had to worry all the time. And even though you've been in business for so long, mm -hmm. you still feel like you have to worry all the time. I think that's part of being an entrepreneur, though. Do you think? I think so. I mean, even myself, I, as a real estate agent, um, when COVID hit for us, like, we're, we weren't allowed to show homes. And then mm -hmm. uh, because it's housing, it's a necessity. And so um, 
our business model changed. So now we have to do all these precautionary things. I bought a, a 3D camera so I could do 3D walkthroughs mm -hmm. for, for my listings. And, and so I think it's just, you just always worry is because you don't have a, a paycheck. Right. You don't, you, you don't, don't do have eight hours. To fall back on. You don't do eight hours a day. <laughs> like, you know, I work 10, 12 hours a day, most days. Easily. Right. Yeah. Um, but people don't see that. They only see um, the the. I guess for you, it'd be they see your success. You're in Lincoln Center, with a, you know, high traffic, high um, areas that is very that is very desirable to be in. So they see that beautiful building. They only see that. They don't see the struggle behind the scenes of where you're like, man, you know, mm. our pita bread, you know. Yeah, it didn't get delivered, yeah. and you can't go buy it somewhere to no. replenish it. Or, you know, the feta cheese, which is so amazing there. Like, it didn't get delivered, so you're like, what do I do? That's a major problem, too. Yeah, <laughs> because that recently happened also, and it's not easy to fix when, like, like, the truck broke down or something. It's not like you can go to Costco or Podesto's and buy it. Yeah, you can't. So it is, Yeah. And then you have the other factor of when you have a family, mm -hmm. I think. And then, you know, when you're – so I can easily be at the restaurant till 7.30, 8 o'clock. And sometimes I'll think at 5.30, oh, I'm going to go home and be home by 6. And, God, that will be great to be home two hours earlier. Then you get home – you know, then you get sidetracked or somebody has a question or a phone call comes in and they get too busy and they can't answer. So then you answer it and then you get home at seven. But then you have four kids. And then you have homework. To and do. like literally last night, my son was like, what am I eating for dinner? And it was like nine o'clock. And I'm like, oh, let me see. You know, but it's Some like. taquitos yeah. in the fridge, son. <laughs> yes. It's just so. It's, a, it's The juggling is hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I understand. I totally understand that. Yeah, I know you have kids too. It's hard. And having a household and taking care of your chores and then your business chores. Mm -hmm. And then being worried that your business can't open. Yeah. So you know. what have you done to keep your business going during this time? Well, when we couldn't open at all... And, and I read through the lines of Newsom and knew that delivery was allowed. So I just, well, actually what happened is you walked into the restaurants <laughs> that one morning and you had said you should do these videos. And so then I, I started you, putting you, it out. You were you were pretty emotional then. You, you had a small breakdown. You're like, I don't know what to say. I'm like, just tell people what you want them to know. And you did it and it was great and got lots of views and um you know, which still always blows me away i'm like <laughs> my daughter even was you know they have all those youtube things and these families that are like multi-millionaires i guess and i was like why do people watch those people and my daughter is like because they just do and they're making tons of money i'm like well i do videos I wonder if I can make tens of money. <laughs> and she's like, Mom, you just talk into a camera. Nobody wants to watch that. But, <laughs> so it's, but when people do, I'm like, I don't know why, but I'm thankful that they do. And it gets the message out faster. It does. And, you know, because uh, I, I watch a lot of your videos and you're, you're talking about your specials. Hey, we're delivering to Linden. We're delivering to Lodi. People are like, yeah, I don't feel like cooking tonight. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I saw pictures but, of your son, you know, delivering and, and stuff like that. So that's, I think it's probably made your family business more of a family business. Yeah, this. I think it probably makes it more real because people see who it's all made up of. I'm sure it's always interesting to know like, oh, that's the owner and, and those are their kids. or And yeah. then when they're all working. And then if you, you know. I always like to know the history of the restaurants, especially the staples. Like, um, you know, there's a um, – it's in the Filipino, Filipino Plaza downtown. I can't even say that right now. This lady had been – she's been in business for – her family's been in business for um, probably 80 years. Oh, It's called wow. Bun Bakery. They make pork buns and other little pastries. Oh, I saw that the other day. Man, they're so good. And I posted that and so many people were like, oh, I remember going there as a kid. And so 
nobody knows the story of of these restaurants that have been in business for forever. So mm -hmm. I like bringing people in to share their story because it's interesting. Like, cause like, um, like we were saying earlier, people only see the success where you're right. at right now. They don't see the struggles behind the scenes. So sharing those struggles and makes them more real to people. And I think a lot of people relate. I think that's why you have done so well on Facebook is people can relate to the struggle and yeah. they see you uh, getting through it and it, it may encourage them or inspire them to do something different than what they've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. It gives them another avenue. outlook or avenue to mm -hmm. kind of try. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you took my advice. Like, I wish my kids would take my advice the way you did. Oh my gosh, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just like every day there's a video. I'm I like, know. I'm just like, I love it. No, so I was so desperate. I was, it was desperate times, right? Create desperate measures. Oh my gosh, I was like, that video works. So I have to do a video every day. And don't you remember, anyways, I messaged you and I'm like, did I do it right? Or now what should I do? And you said, just keep doing it. So I, in my mind, I was like, I have to do a video every day of something. So I remember that conversation. It was like 11 o'clock at night. You're like, I don't know if I should be doing it. I'm like, well, it's a risk because you don't know how much of the videos help in your business. So if you stop, people think you're closed. Right. Then what? Right. So the thing is, is that what I've noticed also is that when really bad things was happening, I was doing videos every day because every day was like a bad day, right? Because yeah. you couldn't open. So every day was like another desperate, let's make sure people know we're open. Yeah. And then all these things started happening, like the protests started happening. And then they were wanting to close down Lincoln Center. And then... Um, then it, we got closed down again and we had to just do patio dining and then the power went out. And then so every time when something would happen, I would think, oh, I should do a video because at least it got the word out mm -hmm. and people saw it right away. And so then when we were able to open again and even though we can only do patio dining, we were still functioning because thankfully the weather was nice for mm -hmm. that whole like month or, or so. And so then I wasn't doing as many videos of myself because what am I going to talk about every day? Mm. Like our specials kind of revolve. <laughs> They're the same every <laughs> but, week. But so people it's don't like, know. It's Monday. It, it might be lamb chops today. People are like, oh, I'm feeling like lamb chops now. I know. I mean, so I would think like I, feel, I cannot just keep doing. So then I, but I would always do something, right? I would always mm. post or do pictures or I would do videos of something or other. But then just recently, when like the power went out and the the weather came out where it was going to be triple digits. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to do another video. And so it's so sad that you do these videos when you feel like your world is falling apart. It's a diary. Right? Some, some sort. Like you, yeah. Because <laughs> you know how Facebook will bring back those memories, you know, two years later, you're like, Oh man. my God. I, I look some of my pictures like, man, I was a hot mess in that one. Like, right? Why did I post that? <laughs> I know. And I'll be like, I remember why, because I was so upset and distressed and I didn't care. And I was just like, whatever, it'll get buried tomorrow because I'll do another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Tell Facebook brings it back. But yeah. It's good. It bring oh, I didn't really think about that. But, it, it, uh, but nobody sees those only you, unless you share them out. So you're good. Oh, yeah. True. Huh? So uh, right now you're doing patio dining. We are. And so, you know, then the weather was triple digits for like 12 days in Were a row. people still which coming is, out? No, not so much. A little tiny bit, mm -hmm. but not so much. So then I, it was, again, you have to go to Facebook and, and just hours. remind people that we'll deliver. And mm -hmm. you don't want to heat up your house because if it's this hot outside, oh, you man. know. And then with the rolling blackouts, you're not supposed to use your air that much. So if you're going to heat up your whole house by cooking food, so just order Papa Pablo's and that eliminates it all. Yeah, that so, was good. That helped. I mean, on Tuesday, I think we had 35 deliveries. Oh, wow. Which is a lot. So, and that was, you know, supposed to be the hottest day. So that, um, yeah, we, I saw that post of your salad. I'm like, oh man, that sounds so good right now. I know the nice fresh salad. Mm -hmm. The latest thing is that, so now we're trying to figure out misters. And we had misters when we first opened the restaurant. Okay. But they were like in conjunction with the fan system. And so when the fans, the misters would spread, but they would fall on you. And so mm -hmm. people got wet. Yeah. Because it's not like, it's not so hot that it evaporates by the time it gets down to right. your head. 
So we ended up not using them anymore. So we haven't used them in like nine years. Oh. So now every, with the heat, everyone's like, oh, use misters. And I'm like, oh, God, it's not that easy. But we did start talking about those misters again. And yesterday I went through and I was talking to a couple of the employees about trying to get them working again. And they sent me a video this morning and so they got the misters working. Oh, nice. So you just have to keep on, I guess. Keep on keeping on, like yeah. Joe Dirt said. Yep, and trying to improve and mm -hmm. I guess just can't give up. No. I mean, there's no alternative. No, there's not. Mm -mm. So why don't we talk about a little bit how um, Andy started Papa Pablo's. I remember it started out, I mean, I remember going to, I never heard of the restaurant. Some friends said, let's go to this little hole in the wall on Pacific Avenue yeah. and, and eat there. I'm like, I'm like, what is it? They're like, Mediterranean food is good. I'm like, okay. And uh, I've been a huge fan ever since. So, like, yeah, that's awesome. So, Andy was, I think he was like 30 ish or so. He was in, he was in real estate, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was in real estate and he was doing pretty well. And he was like in San Diego. And then he always loved the idea of owning a restaurant. His dad was a cook and his dad loved to cook. And so, he was started moonlighting as a realtor, but then at night he got a job as a dishwasher at a restaurant and then moved to be a server and a manager and all that to So he's seen, find he out started industry. from the bottom and on purpose. He was like 30 and the business um, that he worked for, the owner was like, Why would you want to be a dishwasher? But he wanted to learn every aspect of the business. Very smart. Which yeah. is pretty admirable. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. And so then he opened Papa Pavlo's and over on that little spot in Pacific Avenue. Mm -hmm. And when I met him, he had had it for seven years. So we've been together for 24 wow. years. So, I mean, I've always thought of it as his business because he had it, you know, obviously mm -hmm. it was his thing. Um, I was in my last year of college at UOP in business administration, and my emphasis was in marketing. Oh. So, oh my God, like 20 years later, I tell my kids, I am totally using my degree right now. <laughs> That's so, like funny. That All because funny. this real estate agent come in and said, do a video. You're I like, know. I'm like, I, I can Hey, do I that. got a degree. Like, I could use it now. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So, anyhow, and then we moved to Lincoln Center like 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Has it been that long? It has been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember when uh, it was being built, and I was like, what is that? That's an amazing looking building. Mm -hmm. like, it is a big building. A lot of thought went into creating that place. Mm hmm. And then you're doing Lodi? Yeah, so, you know, um, we opened a restaurant in Modesto. Really? So, actually, what happened is we opened Modesto before Lincoln Center. So, we had two kids, and my kids are, like, 20, 19, 17 and a half. So, I was pregnant with my 17 and a half year old. When we opened Modesto. I didn't even know there was a Modesto location. And we had it for six years. And we had a couple of partners. But it was really hard going to Modesto mm -hmm. from here. And anyways, it was just, it was um, hard. And, you know, we had small kids. But it was just going back and forth, back and forth. And the partners involved weren't, like, super in love with the restaurant industry where they mm -hmm. were, like, everybody was gung-ho about it. So... We ended up selling it, but we unfortunately had to sell it as a Papa Pablo's because mm. it was right when um, the economy was starting to go down again. It was because I'd have to sit and think about how long ago it was. But anyhow, it's okay. I think, it, well, it was right before we opened Lincoln Center. Okay. So it was like 10, 11 years ago. Anyways, so then we decided we want to move to Lincoln Center. So we wanted to sell that and dissipate that so that we could start Lincoln Center. Okay. So now, actually, we have a lot of issues with um, people getting confused a lot. Even sometimes people will call our restaurant, place an order, and then they'll call back or, like, or not. And they'll say, oh, wait, I thought I was calling Modesto. I don't know why. That's never happened. And now with all this COVID stuff that's happening, mm. I think because we have the same area code. I don't know. Possibly. But anyhow, so we did. We stopped with that one to focus on Lincoln Center. And now um, we're opening in Lodi. 
And maybe you could answer the phone. Uh, Papa Pablo Stockton. We do. Really? Oh my people god! People still don't get yeah, it. Yeah, because I think people don't listen. Uh, they yeah. just hear you like Papa Pablo. Da, da. So we always say, you know, good afternoon, Stockton. Papa Pablo's. How may I help you? And then they go through their spiel. Now we say at the end, okay, so we'll see you in Lincoln Center. <laughs> You know, like you have to say it again. Really, and reiterating. Some, uh, yeah, and the other day it still happened, and I was talking to the cashier, and she's like, "I even said at the end, Lincoln Center." I think people just like stop listening to you at a point; they just figure you're saying your goodbyes. Possibly. Yeah. So what's uh the you you spoke about the ingredients? Like your euros are uh, everything there is so good and fresh. Everything you source is, I mean, not everything is local because it's some of the Mediterranean, but yeah, and the meats and stuff. But but a lot of the vegetables and the fruits and those are all local that we get. That's nice. Yeah, the nuts. I mean, we use a lot of walnuts. Oh, those the are all local. Yep, yeah, that's all local. So. We have tomato guys come and deliver tomatoes to us in the back door. We go to the farmer's markets sometimes, too, because then you can get better quality, yeah, yes. you know, searching out our local mm -hmm. purveyors. So, I mean, the meats and fish, obviously, you're kind of stuck. You, you have to order that and just make sure you get really high quality. And we don't get frozen foods. So that's good. Yeah. So I mean, I think it quality. shows the in, in product. I think so too. And I, we're always like wanting to make sure that people are getting the best for their money, the best value. Mm -hmm. So there's like not any restaurants hardly around that you get a light, like a nice size salad with your meal, which comes with the vegetables and a starch and the protein and pita bread. I think I'm going to have to kidnap you and get that recipe for that salad dressing. <laughs> I love I know, that, that salad, salad dressing. dressing is really good. It's so like, it it's just I don't know what's so good about it. Maybe it's just because it's so simple. Uh, whatever the ingredients are, it just tastes good. And um, my favorite is the chopped uh, gyro salad. Yeah. But I go back and forth between the chopped chicken or the chopped gyros because you I, know what I do. I do the chopped chicken and beef, which is like it's a prime sirloin cut. Mm. So I do beef and chicken. I haven't tried that one yet. I and I add avocado. I eat With a lot extra. Of extra uh, feta cheese man i, I know. just love that cheese it's so yeah. it's healthy for you too actually goat cheese oh it's goat cheese it is yeah i did not know that see yeah i just uh learned something new <laughs> so what do you when do you foresee the lodi store opening oh my god that is like the million dollar question because everybody asks and it's so stressful is the only thing is, is it, that the building department? No. Or just no, our state of California. Oh. <laughs> you can't. Oh, if you can't see indoors, you know, like the the outside building is. So we have a large a kind of amount of property on it that mm -hmm. in a, a, the next few years, the plan is to build a larger Papa Pablo's. So the original idea was that we were never going to have a restaurant there right now. We were going to be the second phase. And so we were going to have three tenants. Mm. And then that my husband was like, oh, why don't we be the third tenant? So he wanted to do a wine bar. But then I had said, you know, it's too many people know Papa Pablo's. They're not going to want to go sit there and just have wine. They're going to want to eat Papa right. Pablo's. So, so we'd have to do a smaller restaurant. So... That's what we're doing. And it's like the size of Pete's coffee. Okay. It, there's like 10 tables inside. But um, now with nobody being able to go inside, then you could see outside and outdoors. But there is some of it. Some of it's under construction. It's not so much under construction, though. It's just it's a concrete sidewalk. We're going to have a fire pit and waterfall. The waterfall is done. And then some landscaping like brick cases so that you could put some flowers inside but sit around the edges. And then the property beside it is just dirt. So that's the thing is that if you're going to see outdoors. Nobody wants to look at dirt. I mean, you're going to be sitting out, you know. So I was just thinking, if anything, we might Plant just. some grass in there. I know. No, we are. Because you could do outdoor weddings and you could really spruce it up and do mm -hmm. some tents and stuff. And it could be really nice. 
But I was thinking if anything, we can at least just open and do takeout and delivery. I just fear that people are going to want it, you know, like, gosh, it's too bad that they're not open. And then you're going to feel the pressure of, all right, we'll just start, you know, bringing tables out and everything. But even today, Andy was like, we got to go get those TVs and put them in. And part of me is thinking like, oh, my God, why do we have to worry about putting TVs in right now? But that's how close we are. Well, I'm going to have to come out and take a look at it. Oh, yeah, you can. That's a good idea. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the corner of School Street and... And Lockford. Lockford. Yeah, it's uh, just north of the movie theater. I remember seeing the sign up there f- for quite a few years. Papa yeah, Pablo's coming. coming. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was a few years in the making. Mm-hmm. So where do you foresee Papa Pablo's in the future? Yeah, I don't know because I think there's so much potential. But the problem is, is that... you like you get maxed out as a person, mm-hmm. you know, cause even every day I, I have great ideas like, Oh, we could do this and we could do this. But then, then, you know, an order calls and you start taking the order and then you start moving over here and then you start moving over here and then you're like, Oh shoot, I forgot. We could do this and we could do this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's just, you need leverage. You need to have like uh, somebody you could brain dump on. <laughs> like, here's my idea. And then help me make it happen. Because mm-hmm. even with the misters, I told them yesterday, we can make those misters work. And they're like, no, we can't, Jennifer. No, we can't. They're all intergrained together. They come out of a, the attic. It's not going to work. And I'm like staring at them. And I go, that tube right there is rubber, right? And they're like, yeah. And I go, well, why can't you cut it and then connect it and then go, and they're like, oh, yeah, maybe you can do that. And then today I got a video, and the misters were working. But you have to, like, be the executor. Yeah. All the, That's the issue. Even with, like, doing the schedule at the restaurant, I have somebody that has helped me in the past. But you can't, like, completely give it all up because there's yes. – Yeah, you can. I don't know. You just have to do it. You think. I do, absolutely. Mm. You're going to run yourself ragged. Yeah. Well, I just worry that they don't <laughs> schedule people enough or they schedule too much or, you know. Play favorites with their buddies. Yeah. Yeah. I just worry about that kind of stuff. But that's like an issue I, that I guess I worry so much. So, I don't know. See, we're having a breakthrough, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I know. I guess I got to start giving things up. Yeah. Give yourself a little more sanity back. I, I think it would be important. Well, I think that is important. I think that somehow I, I do have to do that. But when you're an overachiever, it's kind of hard, you know. I yeah, know. I work all the time. If I'm not working, I'm studying, trying to be better. Yeah, I know. I feel the same, too. So I'm taking uh, – I just finished all my coursework for my broker's exam. And so now I'm studying from to, to pass the, the state licensing test to become a broker. That's awesome. So – So, but do you always just feel like you're just like the average Joe? Like, I always just still feel like I'm just like this little raggedy person, just like a hamster just trying to make it. Like, I feel like I look like crap all the time. My makeup's melting off all the time. My mask is over my face. and It has makeup all over it. And my hair is blowing everywhere (laughs) because the wind's out. Everything's outdoors. But people relate to real. I just feel so schmucky. People relate to real. Like, for any instance... I feel just like I'm just an average guy. And then uh, the San Joaquin Magazine called like, hey, you were voted the number one real estate agent in Stockton. Yeah, like, that was so great. I'm like, how that, like, what, how that happened? Like, did somebody put my name in, you know, m- multiple choice? Like, no, people wrote you in. I was like, wow, that is so powerful. People took a minute uh-huh. to take a moment and write my name in because Right. They see what I do. and Yeah. I was like, man, that's so awesome. So I understand how you feel. You just got to. But I think that keeps you humble because if you indulge into that, I'm so great and this oh, and that, then yeah, that's... It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work. People wouldn't connect, relate to you and it would kill your business. So uh, Yeah, and that's so far from how I feel anyways. Being in the restaurant industry is <sighs> – a massive struggle like you have to put so you have you have to constantly be putting money into it so you're not really getting much money out of it mm-hmm. i mean i was a server at the restaurant for like the last five years 
So I, well, I would say to people, did Annie like, pay you well? <laughs> yeah, I was free. <laughs> and I would think, do you think I want to be serving on the floor? You know, I've got four kids. I'm yeah. running a business, and and then I'm committed to being on the floor. But the amazing thing about doing that is that you could really see your product come out and you could see how the cooks right. in the kitchen were working, how the servers reacted or interacted with each other. And how they interact with your clients. And the clients. Because you're out there on the on the floor. So And how I interact with them also. And sometimes um, we would have a hostess that would have the I figured out that they would see people and say the owner's going to take care of you so then when i would walk over they would be like oh my gosh and i would say do not tell them that, that i'm the owner just have them think i'm a regular worker and don't know who i am and so it's nice to at least get that part of it now i don't think i could ever really do that again because the delivery because that's the only positive thing that has come out of covid is that that delivery aspect. Did you always deliver? So we delivered a little bit. We did. We've always done like pharmaceuticals and offices. Mm -hmm. And then occasionally, you know, somebody would call and say, oh, I'm having a party for 30 people. But it was always typically a catering. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you would have staff there and whatnot. So now with this, like it's changed everything where it's just opened up a, an entire like new sector of our business. Wow. And and I was so appreciative to everybody that took us up on it in the beginning because when you lose your business, which we did basically, yeah. you had to find a way to keep it going. And that was the only way we could do it. And it really opened up where people are like, I hope you'll keep doing this after COVID. And then afterwards, now I'm like, why would we stop doing that? Yeah. Because it because it actually, I think, so what, feeds a need. What's What made you think? So you could deliver. So... What made you like, what was the thought process that you were feeling like we need to start delivering or you're like, hey, I want to try it? Well, the thought process was we need to do anything and everything that will get people to order food. And people were so scared to go anywhere. Mm. Remember, it yeah. was like quarantine. You weren't even, you, you could go only to the grocery go to the stores store, there's at no, certain there hours. And, yeah, there, there was nothing. Yeah. yeah. So it was during that time where it was like, we can wait for people to come to us or we can offer to go to them and then maybe have our business grow a little bit while it was stagnant. Right. So that's how that happened. But it was a great response. And I don't see why we would ever stop doing it, actually. I know. It's a great idea. I know. It was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those videos and, and delivery helped. So. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, I guess maybe I'll just have to keep doing it. You know, the other day somebody came in the restaurant and he goes, you got to keep doing your videos. I, well, I was just around the corner and I saw your video and I thought I'm going to go in and order food right now. So I'll just have to keep doing videos. It, it's just me, my same old face, unless I'm going to like put a hat on sometimes. It, it, or <laughs> you know, because... You, you look at them and you're like, well, what do I want to eat? And then your video pops up and you're like, oh, I'm going to go get me a salad or yeah, I'm going to go have uh, um, some pita and some euros or, or whatever your favorite is at the restaurant. You know, I've tried to actually see how you can really see how social media affects your business. Because, like, what about stories? And then what about, so, you know, that's what I wonder I don't do a lot of story. I do, but um, I guess the story gets a lot more engagement because people just kind of thumb through. So I think you know, I do a, everything. A mix of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything uh, I post, I post it like everywhere. Yeah. You and got so to. my kids are like, Mom, you're everywhere. You're like on my Twitter feed. You're on my Facebook <laughs> feed. You're on my Instagram feed. That's what people say about me. I, I see you everywhere. So, but it. I know. And then, of course, they're my kids. They have to follow Lodi Papa Pablos and Papa Pablos and me and. But that sometimes I worry a little bit because I get a lot of like, oh, is Lodi open yet? I know it's because I post on Lodi Papa Pablo's, but mm. I'm hoping at by this point people realize that we're not open yet, but we're but still we're serving. It. And I say, you know, like serving out of Lincoln Center or mm -hmm. we'll deliver to Lodi. So, but yes. anyhow, so I guess it's always a work in progress. It's going to be like this for the rest of my life. That's kind of so tiring and sad to think. Well, that's why you got to have somebody else write the schedule. 
it's baby steps. Yeah. And then you start delegating, and then you then you have the uh, the wind spoon in the back, like the crazy Italian lady, you know, just yelling at people. Oh yeah, I would never <laughs> want people to think of me like that. But you know, you got to start delegating, not abdicating, right? Giving up and letting somebody do something because you don't want to do it. There's a difference, right? Because you're like, just take care of it. But yeah. you're, but by delegating, you're saying, I want you to do it. I want you to do this, but I want you to do it this way. Yeah. There's a huge difference between the two. Right. So. All right. Well, I'll talk to that person, that gal today mm -hmm. that's helped me for years. Well, <clears throat> baby steps. Yeah. Well, when the COVID first started too, you had like no employees. So mm. I, I was doing everything for sure. And then afterwards, it just kept on like, eh, I'll just do it. It's not that bad. But, I mean, it does take like an hour and a half. And it would be nice to have an hour and a half back. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go down to uh, Nectar or something and just have, have 30 minutes to yourself. Turn the phone off. Just peace and quiet. Yeah. So. Yeah, that does sound good. Well, thank you for mm -hmm. taking the moment and stopping in and sharing your story. And I yeah, appreciate thanks for guys. asking me to. So, anything you want to tell the people out there? Oh well, I always want to thank everybody for supporting us and ordering food from us and coming in and picking up food, coming in and dining on our patio. It's like I can't can't express enough how much it means to me to have people support us. Well, thank you. Yeah, that we means appreciate a lot. you too. Thank you, everyone. Have an amazing day. Be good to everybody. Take care of your family, and we will see you next time. Have a great day.